Hi, welcome back. In previous lectures, we talked about various 3D printing processes like SLS, FDM, SLA. Now in this lecture, we will talk about electron beam melting. Electron beam melting is the 3D printing process which is used only for conductor materials as it is clear from the name itself that electron beam it means here for diffusing our powder or our raw material, we will use electron beam to melt something. So let's start what is electron beam melting. 3D printing. So, electron melting beam is a 3D printing technology that uses a electron beam to fuse metal powder together to build parts. It means for building any parts, we will use electron beam and there will be a metal powder. When electron beam will contact with the metal powder, it will get diffused and your parts will be built up. We will see how this whole setup will take place in upcoming slides. So, this electron beam melting we will learn here. And we will also talk about what are the different advantages and disadvantages of electron beam melting. Uh, when you will look the EBM process, it is quite similar like SLS 3D printing. Like in SLS 3D printing, we also used uh, metal powders or other powders, and uh, we use their laser. We used laser there. Here we are uh, using electron beam. So uh, there are two main broad differences between electron beam melting and selective laser sintering. One is that in SLS we use laser for melting our raw material or a powder but in uh, EBM we will use electron beam and the second difference is that electron beam as we know electron can only, only travel in uh, metals so uh, here there is a constraint that EBM is especially used for only conductive or metal parts. But uh, uh, when we talk about laser SLS, we, uh, SLS can be used for ceramics, polymers and metal as well. So uh, two are the main broad difference between electron beam melting and SLS. So now let's talk about electron beam melting. So as I told you that electron beam melting is only for uh, metals like titanium alloys and, and all. But we, will, we cannot use it for uh, printing plastic or ceramic parts. That's due to the fact that the technology is based on electrical charges and they are what produce the reaction between powder and electron beam causing the former to solidify. So in uh, EBM processes, if we talk about the, what are the main components, the first is that uh, in electron beam is necessary then a powder container in which our metal powder will be there, a powder feeder, it means uh, uh, it will continuously supply your powder whenever the requirement, a powder recorder, it will uh, record the uh, layer of powder and a heated build plate uh, as you know build what is build plate build plate is where we, our uh, this is the platform where our model will be created and the most important thing in EBM you you must know about that EBM type of 3d printers is only used in vacuum because if you will not use vacuum then electron will be scattered here and there and uh, it will not focus where we want to get it to. So before starting our uh, main event or we can say our 3D printing, let's talk about what are the requirements you need to sure before starting your 3D printing. So we are talking about pre-printing. So before printing can be start, the powder bin is filled with the desired metal powder. Whatever metal powder you, you need, you need to fill your, uh, you need to fill in container and once you, you feed your powder, then the powder bin is placed into the 3D printer and the internal pressure is set to around 0.001 megabar that is very 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 less uh, if you talk about this 10 million times less than atmospheric pressure that much that much less pressure is required in 3D printer when the desired pressure is achieved once you achieved your desired uh, pressure in build chamber the electron beam is fired up your electron beam will be fired up and this electron beam will hit your build plume so that is preheating at too high temperature so whatever temperatures of preheating you need uh, it will be done for example if you talk, talk about titanium requires 600 to 700 degree c after the build platform is heated printing process can finally start so you need to have a, a temp a pressure around 0.001 megabar then you need a vacuum then uh, there is a preheating required and once all is done you can start your 3d printing so now let's talk about how this main event of 3d printing takes place so 3d printing itself starts with a powder recorder one uh, powder recorder one layer one powder layer will be drawn and which deposit a single layer of preheated powder onto the build flame build platform so uh, one single layer of uh, powder will be laid out on the build platform once the powder is set it's time for the electron beam melting to begin 
so the electron beam is controlled by a set of electromagnetic coils there are an fd edm type of 3d printer there are electromagnetic coils with which instruct our your laser that where to go and where not to go so it, it electromagnetic coils basically control your electron beam that uh, which point which accurately point the beam towards the desired points of the build platform so it will control your electron beam so the electron beam moves selectively while melting the powder and causing the powder particles to fuse together so when this uh, electron beam will contact with the metal powder the metal powder will fuse and it uh, combinedly they will make a layer so uh, after one layer is completed the the build platform is moved down one layer in height the recoater come in again like i told you in sls like if uh, one when one your one layer is completed your build platform will move down downwards one layer and, uh, and another layer of powder uh, will be given by roller or your recoater and again this process will be uh, repeat and uh, uh, after repetition of several times your model will be completed so the process is repeated until the entire part is finished now here in this diagram you can clearly see that uh, uh, energy source is uh, where your electron beam will electron beam will be generated and then this electron beam uh, the, uh, in left hand side there is metal powder powder roller or powder feeder this is powder feeder and this is your build tank and build tank this is your build platform and uh, this uh, once like this gear the parts has been constructing here once your laser will insert the powder uh, this will convert into so into a solid and then this build platform will go down and this metal powder uh, powder fit tank will go upside one layer and this powder roller will again give roll the powder to your build tank so this is how this whole process works now once your uh, part has been completed now it's time to do post processing so when finished parts are not immediately visible but since they are inside the powder bin covered with semi sintered powder which must be removed so you have to remove the powder around the your product so you can see your part clearly because so when parts are finally finished the powder bin is taken out of the 3d printer despite the parts already being manufactured you still can't use them yet for starters they have to be left to cool so uh, once your parts has been completed because uh, we know uh, laser has been continuously given the heat so parts firstly you need to cool it in atmosphere then if you think that the properties are not there then you can also do heat treatment to that particular product now uh, this is how this whole process works i hope you got the idea but now let's talk about what are the advantages and disadvantages of electron beam melting 3d printer so if i talk about the first advantage is that this is high density and therefore the strength is so high due to the full melt of the powder here the metal powder is fully melted and because of melting there is no porosity so the strength is very high density is very high then faster printing process it is faster than sls and other 3d printing processes so consume less time then fewer supporters required compared to laser powder use bed fusion there is a less support required uh, however i told you that in sls uh, minimal or no support required but uh, if i talk about ebm there is nothing like support is or very very a, a low support is required in ebm as well uh, if i talk about some disadvantages then small print volume because we need to maintain so low pressure then vacuum as well so uh, print volume is very low that uh, maximum 350 mm diameter can be produced in this type of 3d printer limited material selection uh, only titanium or chromium cobalt alloys are there because uh, as we told you we cannot use in every raw material because there is a limitation of metals electron beam is there so limited material option is available expensive machines and materials as we are using electron beam here so we know that how costly it is so uh, because of this particular reason the mas machines are very expensive and the materials are also very these are some advantages and disadvantages of electron beam melting thank you if you want to learn 3d printing from design to finished product you can join the full course this course consists 50 plus video lectures and course is divided in so many modules you can check the detailed information in description box in this course along with video lectures you will get qjs assignments and notes after the completion of the course you will get authorized certificate which can be useful for your academic or job interviews so click to the link 
present in description box and start your 3D printing journey now.